Hi, Chris, Janice, Kevin, Cindy. I just thought I'd uh, do a quick video explanation of what I'm going to ask each of you to do if you're still up for it uh, in my advanced ESL module D. So in this module, um, we cover two units and the writing assignments in, in units nine and 10 are personal narrative and autobiographical essay. And they're pretty similar and students often kind of have a hard time telling what's the difference. So I kind of blend them together. Um, the unit nine description says that um, a personal narrative tells a story in a relaxed tone and a style of an event or an issue from the writer's memory. It can be funny or serious, but it doesn't necessarily um, mean that that event was life changing. Uh, autobiographical essay comes from unit 10, and that is when um, they describe an important person, an event or a place in their lives. And that, in, that person, event or place did have a big impact. Um, you know, we talk a lot about using descriptive language, the sensory words, um, avoiding phrases like I had a good time or that she, he or she was a nice person, but explaining why that was a good time and what the person did that was nice. Um, one of the examples that I often have the students think about is if they were going to write about their grandmother's kitchen. And I asked them to remember the smells and the sights and what their grandmother may have been wearing or what she may have been uh, making in the kitchen. Um, and so we will spend some time talking about descriptive language and um, moving away from this long chronological method of storytelling, but to describe something more specific using more detail. And so we'll spend some time before uh, we get into this talking about similes and metaphors, they'll practice them. Uh, I'll require uh, a few of them in their stories. And then um, we'll also practice in, in speaking, which is what I often do um, as a pre-writing activity, just so that they can produce the language in spoken form before they have to sit down and write it out. So um, they've done one oral presentation in the module C that they recorded and sent to me. And so they'll practice this with their group mates, uh, with a partner, I mean. They will be graded on a rubric that kind of looks like this. So um, this top part, will go through it, but they will grade themselves before they hand it in. This is kind of a modification of something called contract grading um, that I've, I've done with my advanced students in the last module. And so a hook, um, I ask them to use a hook to introduce their, their story. And that can be a question. It can be a, fa a shocking fact. It can be a statistic, an anecdote, a joke, or a quote from from someone um, and they'll just say, yes, I used a hook or no, I didn't. Um, and then use and underline at least two similes and two metaphors. Yes, I did it. No, I didn't use and underline um, three sentences where they use correctly um, use and punctuate direct speech. And then these are just um, some of the more formatting issues. So did they set the, the story up like I want it to look? Did they include visuals, which I teach them how to do? Did they uh, hit the minimum length. And then these are just kind of subjective ones that, yes, I found it easy to read. Um, how I do this is students, if if they turn it in, um, that's all they have to do. And, and if they do that, they get a level three, which is essentially 70%. Um, I'll read it and then I'll give them some feedback and tell them, hey, to move from level three to level two, I want you to do this, this, and this. Um, to move from level two to level one, um, essentially from I did it to I'm happy with it, from I'm happy with it to I am proud of my work, um, then they have to do this, this, and this. And then if they reply to me and say, yes, I did all of that, then, then they can earn 100% or level one. Um, let me pause.